Hi guys, it's Arch Norman Arrow, how's everyone doing? Today I'm answering your questions. I did a video a week-ish or so ago, um, really simple. Ask me questions and I'll answer them. There's not really much explanation I need to do. And you guys asked a lot of questions, which is great. Normally I do this thing in two parts, but I'm gonna just do it in one. Just do it all in one go. So you might as well pull up a chair, get a glass of wine, which I have somewhere, uh, or a cup of coffee, whatever your preference is, and let's do it. Oh, I just want to quickly say, I was going to do this one live, but I haven't really figured out the mechanics of that yet, and it's really scary, but eventually I will probably want to do a live video of some kind. So anyway, the first question was the only question that came through Twitter, which is normally the case. One question comes through Twitter, and it's from Adrienne. Hello? You said, which five most seductive, slutty, dirty, sexual perfumes uh, you would recommend to ladies? Wow, you really went in there, Adrian, didn't you? Um, that's really tough because everybody has a different idea of what sexy is and what slutty is and how that smells and how it translates into smell. I will keep it more general and say that... If you want seductive, usually things with musk in, or something that has a slightly animalic edge, a little bit carnal, in my opinion and my experience would be the best kind. Maybe something with jasmine in if it's not too heavy because jasmine is quite seductive. It's known to be an aphrodisiac in some parts of the world. So maybe a white floral, but in terms of my experience with what men like from what i've heard from other people men like sweet stuff usually not everyone that's very general but sweet stuff normally does the trick from what my manager tells me men like simplistic does the job sweet fragrance that makes you smell yummy and edible i don't know about slutty though but maybe something a bit animalic that's all i can say for now so on to the first question that came from youtube it's from supersonic and it is which perfume do you hate I don't know. I mean, I don't think there's any that I actually hate. There's just some that I feel are very unpleasant. I don't... I always appreciate perfumery. I don't really hate them, because hate's quite a strong word. Um, but more recently, I discovered a fragrance that was sent to me by a lovely subscriber, and it was... it's one of the Guerlain ones. It's called Mythique d'Orient, something like that. It had all of this promise of being a gorgeous, spicy, oriental kind of thing, which I really like. And really, it smelled like a very sweet rose i think with lots of ambergris and ambergris is a really really dodgy note that smells really funky it smells like the sea it's a big note in secretions magnifique by etat libre d'orange which also smells like the sea and kind of wet dog like so that one that one was disappointing but also quite vile i don't really like it at all so i will say that i also don't really like sheepras classic sheepras that is as a general rule anyway next question uh, this comes from Zandria20. You are always active. I speak to you all the time. Um, you asked a lot of questions. How long does it typically, typically take for you to finish a bottle? It used to be not very long at all. When I worked in an office and it was a really fragrance friendly office and loads of people used to spray fragrances all the time, I would finish a bottle. 100 mil would take me about two months maybe. But more recently, it's really slowed down. So now I kind of, I don't know, I just don't really buy as many, I don't think, at least in my own head anyway. <laughs> but um, it takes a long time now. And it depends on the size, it depends on the strength of the fragrance. But 100 mil used to take me about two months. Now it's much longer. Uh, you also said, how many sprays do you typically apply? A lot, really. I'm a self-confessed over-sprayer. But again, it depends on the fragrance. In my recent video, <laughs> my white florals video, I sprayed 13 sprays of Tom Ford's white patchouli, which to me is really normal. In fact, that's quite... It's not that many, really. But I wasn't going anywhere. So when I'm at home, I lavish. It just depends. It really depends. But it's at least a minimum of 10 for whatever. Yeah, I'm a beast in that way. I'm a savage. Okay, have you ever received an anti-compliment? 
Um, has anyone told you they don't like your perfume or that it was too strong, loud? If so, what was the fragrance? Yes, I have. When I used to work in the office as well, it was many years ago though, there was a lady that worked there, who I won't mention in case she ever watches this, probably not, she won't, but she was kind of the office dragon, I'm going to say that. She was very overbearing and forceful and rude, and uh, she commented on a Black Phoenix perfume I was wearing at the time, which was called Knuckle Bones, which is a weird name, and she called it vile to my face and said that it was too strong, and I hadn't even put that much of it on by my standards. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that was not very nice. Uh, also, you said, when backing up a discontinued scent, how many bottles before you feel satisfied in your stash? At least two backups, depending on what it is again. Um, when Dolce Gabbana Red Cap was announced that it was being discontinued, I went and got five of them, but only because that's a real, real favourite of mine. But Shalimar Parfum Initial, the pink one, um, I got at least, I got one. I think one to two is fair dues, depending on the size of your collection. Or if you're just crazy, like most of us guys are, it can go much higher. But anyway, thanks for your questions, Andrea. Okay, the next questions come from Mrs. Press. Hello, how are you? Um, I hope you're doing well. I speak to you all the time as well. So you asked, you asked quite a few as well. So do you ever get overwhelmed with the amount of bottles in your collection? Yes, all the time. I go through phases of really discovering so many new things that I think I'd like to add to my collection and then sometimes I look at my collection and think oh gosh you're crazy and there's stuff you know your shelf's gonna fall down and the stuff under your bed is like getting out of control but when that happens I normally give stuff away I pare my collection down in big chunks usually my mum is the recipient of them because she loves fragrances as well so I mean at Christmas I gave her six bottles of perfume so I'd, when I get to that breaking point, I do something about it. I either maybe sell some or uh, just give them away to friends and family. So it's good to be friends with me because you get free perfume all the time. And you also said, do those closest to you understand your perfume hobby or do they think you're nuts? Emoji nut. Um, no, they don't. They all indulge me. I have a very great circle of friends and family that listen to me ramble on about fragrance. I enable them. I talk about it all the time. I share my fragrances with them. So I've made them into many versions of me now. So yeah, I've molded them. They let me. They just, they indulge me. They love me. So that's all I can ask for. Uh, you also said, if you could add anything to your collection right now, what would it be? The top of my list, I've mentioned it in the last couple of weeks in my videos is Nanban by Arquiste. Um, I, it will be the next thing I get and it's I'm not going to review it until I have the bottle. It's amazing. It's based on a Japanese galleon uh, carrying loads of samurai warriors and the cargo it would have been carrying at the time. So um, it's got black pepper in it. It's got uh, coffee. It's got lots of resins, a really gorgeous sandalwood. Um, it's got myrrh and just, it's really nice. It's kind of a really spicy, resinous fragrance that I have fallen in love with massively. So it will be the next thing I get for sure, really soon. You said, what is your favorite scent memory? Not necessarily perfume, but could be. Um, I'm gonna answer that in a non-perfume way, just to kind of change tack a little bit, because I'm guessing most of you guys probably asked about fragrance. I don't know yet, I haven't read them. This is off the cuff, guys, off the cuff, which is the best way totally unprepared. So I remember when I was younger and my uncle and auntie and cousins used to always take me on holiday with them, which it was amazing, you know, they took me around the world at a very young age, so I got to experience a lot of things. But one particular holiday was a place that we have in England, uh, in the UK, called Centre Parks. It's kind of like a woodland retreat where you can do cycling and sailing and swimming um, and you stay in little cabins and when we were walking around most days I always got this amazingly beautiful whiff of it was almost like campfire smoke but it was more like hickory chips but it wasn't barbecue it wasn't like somebody was barbecuing food it was just this most amazing woody smoky smell that used to stop me in my tracks even when I was 11 and I'm still to find a fragrance that actually replicates that because it was something that I, if I smell it again, I will immediately know. So that's definitely one of my 
one that springs to mind right now. I also really love the smell of Thailand <laughs> and the smell of smoking food and the tropical plants, just the humidity of it and the fumes, just everything at once coming together. I love the smell of Thailand and sometimes I will smell Thailand randomly in summer in London and just go <gasps> and almost fall over. But the Centre Parks one is the main one for me. You said if you could make a perfume now, what category would it fit in and what would be the main notes? Oh gosh, um, it would definitely be something oriental as that's what I usually lean towards or something at least resinous or an incensey and spicy. So I would have myrrh in it, I would have pepper, I would have um, some sort of white floral element because I'm a real white floral lover as well. So it would be cool to have a really resinous white floral, something like that, but with a bit of spice. Something deep, as it's winter, I want to wear something heavy and just grrr at the moment. So winter's my favourite time to wear fragrances, love it, because I can bring out my bad boys, as I say. In your opinion, is Guerlain niche designer or something else? Oh my gosh, this question. <laughs> oh, I need a glass of wine for this one. This whole thing about niche and designer and what is niche is something that gets discussed all the time and everyone has different ideas of what niche is um, and Guerlain is always the one for me that is a bit of a conundrum because niche to me I'll start by saying is a fragrance company that solely focuses on fragrance I'm so surprised at the amount of people that think that Tom Ford is niche when Tom Ford is not niche his sole focus is fashion, but he happens to have a fragrance line. Even though he has a private line in there, there is kind of a niche line within his fragrance collection. It still does not make him a niche perfume house. Stop it, everyone. Stop it. Tom Ford is first and foremostly a designer of clothes, but he has a fragrance line. Which leads me on to say, niche companies are f companies that to me are not mass produced. They focus solely on fragrance and that's it. Not jewellery like Tiffany does, not um, you know jewellery like Bulgari does. They are not niche, they, they design something else and it's not their focus. So I need to stop rambling. Guerlain, very tricky one because they are solely focused on fragrance. That's all they do. So in my head they are niche, but what swings it is they are also mass produced. You can find Guerlain in any shop that sells fragrances now, Samsara. Uh, Shalimar. So they are produced for the masses, but they are niche to me because that is their main focus. So they're a tough one. There's one that's even more bizarre than that to me, and that is Lancome, because Lancome are not a designer, yet they do have a lot of fragrances that are mass produced. But I think they are more, but then they're not a designer. But their main focus is cosmetics, so they focus on cream and skincare and makeup. So they're another one that really bends my head. Any comments would be greatly appreciated. Thanks. So your last question is, do you watch other YouTube fragrance reviewers? If so, who is your favourite? Um, it changes all the time. I do watch fragrance reviewers on YouTube, yes. Um, uh, some of my favourites have disappeared, actually. There used to be a guy that only recorded his videos in black and white. He was an English guy. He's kind of emo with a nose piercing. He had such amazing descriptions and he tended to review more niche stuff. Um, but I've forgotten his name. Damn, I wonder where he went. Oh, hmm. I also used to love this really cool girl from New Zealand who started out a channel uh, and then she also disappeared. I'm not sure why. I've forgotten her name as well because it was probably about two years ago. The guy with the black and white videos was at least three years ago. Um, but other than that, I talk to a lot of fragrance reviewers. I really like Carlos from um, Brooklyn Fragrance Lover. I really like Peter from, um, my, the names, I've just, I've got a lot to think about, <laughs> from Fragrance View. He reviews very much niche stuff. And I still love Katie Puckrick, even though she has stopped reviewing fragrances now. I just liked her very short, sharp kind of obnoxious and strange way of describing fragrances even though they were very short but yeah I, I really liked her as well but there are so many new ones all the time and I always kind of dip in and out I really like Afri Sense if you're watching this Afri Sense hello uh, Pamela
but um, her videos aren't very often, so, but yeah, there are tons I watch, tons. I'm always seeing what everyone else is doing, so I can just steal ideas, basically. That's all I do it for. I don't like them, really. But anyway, thanks, Mrs. Press, and thank you for being a hugely active member on my channel, as well as in my uh, new-ish fragrance group on Facebook, which, by the way, is called Out From Ono Smelly Friends. Go and f come and join if you want. We talk to each other all the time on there, every day. Anyway, so the next question comes from Melissa Lara. You're also a member of my Out From Ono Smelly Friends, because I recognise your photo. Um, have you ever tried Paloma Picasso? It's my mum's signature fragrance. Uh, also, what are some of your top fragrances ever made? Paloma Picasso, no, I have not. I recognise in my head there's an image of a black bottle like that with a kind of circular glass bit in the middle. Is that right? Never tried any, so I can't answer that. I'm really sorry. Um, top fragrances ever made. I can name the ones that I have on my Fragrantica profile at the moment. So Samsara is my ultimate perfume in the entire world. It is what I consider to be my signature. Samsara by Guerlain. It's just incredibly special to me for many reasons and I never tire of it. I think it's just absolutely stunning. I, <coughs> I just swallowed a fly. Perhaps I'll die. I really love White Patchouli by Tom Ford, Portrait of a Lady by Frederick Mao, Carnal Flower also by Frederick Mao, a very unconventional fragrance called MM Inc by Byredo, um, as well as Dolce & Gabbana Red Cap. These are ones that I gush about all the time. Tons, and recently I've discovered so many more, but they're still yet to kind of creep up into my favourites. They haven't managed to knock anything off the top spots yet. So I hope that answers your question. The next question comes from Pat8286. Hello. Hello. My question for you is, what do you think of Taboo by Dana? Oh my gosh, this I get asked this question all the time, and do you know what? I have still never smelled that fragrance. I have read some amazingly crazy reviews about it. People saying it's so disgusting, people saying it's amazing, it's just bold and crazy. I have to get my nose on it. I can imagine that I must have smelled it on someone at some point in my life. You know, I'm getting a bit older now and it's a kind of 70s, 80s fragrance I think. So somebody must have worn that around my childhood. I need to smell it, but I haven't so far, so I can't tell you, I'm sorry. Sorry. The next question comes from Jamie Truesdale. Hi there, when was your earliest realisation that you loved fragrance? Can you remember what perfume or cologne it was? I think for me, and I'm guessing a lot of you guys as well that maybe are watching this, that it usually stem, it stems from either your mum or your dad, right? Because when you're a kid, your, my mum had this dresser with perfume and all of that kind of stuff on it, and it, you just start tinkling around and smelling things and not secretly trying them out, but just, I used to sniff my mum's perfume lids all the time. She used to wear Dior Essence, the vintage one, and Isatis, and Amarige, and Samsara, even when I got a bit older, which is one of the reasons I love it so much. But I think it stems from that, and then I used to always really like candles as well, and incense, and lip balms, and just anything scented, and I just used to smell everything that I could get my nose on because I was just obsessed with it. Um, so, my earliest memories are from my mum, definitely. Amarige, Samsara, uh, Isatis, and White Linen as well, by Estee Lauder. Um, so yeah, that's that one. And also my uncle was very heavily into fragrance, and because I spent a lot of time with that side of my family abroad, I used to always be trying out his fragrances as well, and he used to wear Cool Water and Dupe at the time. <laughs> now he wears Hermes. So, one sec. So the next question comes from Christina Kezel. Um, could you describe the scent of pure patchouli? I love this channel. Thanks, this channel loves you too. So patchouli, oh, okay. So patchouli is essentially a leaf. So it's a green sort of smell, but patchouli is, it's very heavy. Um, it can be sometimes peppery. It's woody also. It's quite a dark, heavy fragrance that is, fragrance, note, sorry that is usually used in the base of fragrances to just add a bit of depth and dry woodiness. It was very favoured in the 70s. A lot of people used to wear pure patchouli oil. It's just, to me, it's dry. I mean, there's many different kinds. You have Indonesian patchouli and some other ones that I can't think of off the top of my head. But it's green, leafy, woody, peppery and dry. That's the main characteristics that I think about patchouli. So, yeah. 
But it's essentially leafy. Okay, uh, Alison Clark, which fragrance do you think has an amazing bottle but a disappointing scent? Um, most of the Bond number no. nines? Sorry? I'm gonna say this, um, which might not be very well received, but I think in terms of the level of designer fragrances, what they do is they put a lot more money into the bottle than the actual formula. So they're designed for you to go, ooh, look at this, it's so pretty, I really want it. And I feel like you have to kind of wade through a lot of designer fragrances now to try and get something that stands out because a lot of them are starting to melt into each other a little bit. But most designer bottles I think are really pretty. Just truthfully, that's the truth. Um, and a lot of them are now becoming a little bit more disappointing to me. I'm having to kind of pick through a little, a little bit more. If I had to give you an exact example, I would say... Hmm... I would say, as a brand, Nina Ricci and possibly Lolita Lempica. They have very gorgeous bottles, apple shapes, things with little jewels hanging off, a little bit embellished and beautiful, but I'm yet to find a fragrance by either of those brands that has really blown me away. So maybe just go and look up Nina Ricci or Lolita Lempica. <laughs> Sorry to anyone that's a fan of them, but that's just my opinion. Gorgeous on a shelf, not so gorgeous in your schnoz. This question comes from Swift Banderilla. I recognise your photo. You're also a member of my Outro Mano Smelly Friends group. Hello, Thomas. Oh, goody. I would love to know. <laughs> oh, goody. Uh, name two to three dirt cheap fragrances you think rival expensive ones. That's easy. There are tons of celebrity fragrances out there that I think are not made necessarily of better quality ingredients, but in terms of the way they perform. For instance, Madonna's Truth or Dare. It smells very, very similar to Alexander McQueen's newest fragrance, which was just called Alexander McQueen in the pink bottle like that. They're very similar, but um, the price point is massively different, and Madonna's Truth or Dare way outperforms that one. Uh, I probably will review that one rec uh, recently, soon actually, and the price point, yeah, is, is massively different. But they smell very similar, but Madonna is much better. That's one. The next one would be probably Glow by JLo. I think it's a fragrance that's really stood the test of time. As harsh as it may seem to some people in the way that it smells because it's synthetic, which is a really weird word to use because most materials used in fragrances are synthetic anyway. <laughs> but um, it just, for the price point that it is, I think you can get it for about 15 pounds now for the 100 mil. It's really lasted and it really lasts as well. So I think, there are definitely a lot of celebrity fragrances and even designer ones that rival niche because niche doesn't always mean that it's better. It doesn't mean that it's better quality because the price is higher by any means. Recently I mentioned Versace Crystal Noir, which isn't, you know, kind of super cheap, but in terms of the way it performs on me is just incredible. It's just so long lasting and it fills a room. Having said that, I might have the pre-formulation, so don't hold me to that one. Okay. Uh, you also asked a really interesting question. Um, do you think the industry is becoming oversaturated and what is the effect? That's a really good question and something that I've actually thought about before. I absolutely think that the, the fragrance industry is becoming overcrowded. It is so hard to keep up with new releases um, and what's going on and more specifically, flankers. I mean, oh my gosh, a, a company will release a new fragrance and then within a month, there's already a flanker. And then within another week, there's already another flanker. I feel like it, be it becomes diluted so much. And I do remember a time when I smelled the first ever flanker of a fragrance that I'd ever seen. And it was Estee Lauder's Pleasures. There wasn't really flankers around at that time. It was sometime when I was much younger, in my very early teens, I think. I can't remember when Pleasures came out. Anyone? But Estee Lauder released three Pleasures flankers. A green one, a pink one, and a something or other one. They were like something, like garden of something. I can't remember, but I remember thinking, oh my gosh, there's a new version of Pleasures. That's really unusual. And now it seems to be that if a company 
has success with the fragrance, then 20 flankers follow. And it just, to me, it takes the edge off, which is why I rarely have flankers of fragrances. I stick to my guns. There are a few. I do have some Mugler flankers, but usually I tend to ignore flankers. But in terms of overcrowded, absolutely yes. There is a new fragrance. There's 10 a day now. And that's why I said it feels like picking through things to find something that's good. I would rather there be three releases a year and all of them be amazing. Do you know what I mean? So, wicked question. I love it. Thank you. Oh, what is the effect? Well, yeah, the effect is that we have, we are, we have too much choice. We have so much choice that nothing really seems to shine through. And it's having too much choice can be a bad thing because you don't really know which direction to go in. It's like walking into a fork in the road and having 20 directions, not knowing where any of them go, but know that you need to get to somewhere. Do you know what I mean? Weird metaphor, but yeah. Lastly, what are your biggest interests and hobbies outside fragrance? Oh, thank you very much to ask. I am a massive music buff. Well, buff, that's not really the word. I've always had a huge passion for music, hence my tattoo. Um, I really like travel. Travel is my other passion. I have two big passions in life. I'm not counting friends, family, because that's a given. I'm talking about things outside of that. Fragrance and travel are my two biggest passions. Travel is probably more... I have a stronger passion for travel than I do for fragrance. I would happily never smell a fragrance again if it meant that I could travel the world. And I'm not tempting fate, I'm just saying. Um, I, I really do get overwhelmed with the fact that there's so much to see in this world and I only have a limited time and it freaks me out. But I'm always looking to go to really far away places outside of my comfort zone and I've done that so far. But it's still never enough. I need to see the world and culture. That's my biggest thing in my life. Other than that, I like the usual things. Theatre, reading, music. Just the basics, really. But smelly things and travel things are my favourite. So the next question comes from Marta... Oh, I can't pronounce this one. Marta... Sesesiak? Is that right, Marta? You said, would you like to work in the perfume industry? Um, I kind of do at the moment. I do work in the perfume industry, but if you mean perfume industry as in creation or behind the scenes or something a little bit more high level, I would love to. I would love to do something in the fragrance industry that isn't at base level. That might sound really bad and say and that I'm not appreciative of my job. That's not true. But it would be good to do both and elevate myself into some sort of position. I don't know what. I mean, the avenues are massive. I've looked at a lot of things. I applied to uh, go to the Givordan or Givordan um, kind of college program, I guess you could call it. In Paris, I was willing to move to Paris for three years um, to become a Givordan perfumer, which I think might have been aiming a bit too high for myself, but you have to go for your dreams, right? Alas, I never heard back from them, but there was a time where I was willing to do anything and I'm always keeping my eyes open. If anyone ever watches this, I'm here, willing and somewhat able. <laughs> Funniest, weirdest comments from haters. Um, do you mean on what I wear or on this channel? Because I can tell you a few. On this channel I'll go with because they're the ones that are easy to remember. Someone told me that I looked like a gypsy, because I had a silver chain on. Somebody said that they thought that I had never smelled saffron before, so they stopped watching my video. And if you just click back a little bit and watch my video of Amar's journey, there was a secret bit of shade thrown to that person. Go and see what I mean. Um, somebody said that I'm an ugly queer. Somebody said that, um, oh, I've been called a prick before, um, and just general thumbs downing on things that I would never understand why somebody would thumbs down. For instance, a worldwide giveaway of free, of perfume that I had, I was giving it away to anyone that wanted to comment worldwide, and uh, somebody thumbs down that. You know, haters will be haters. Haters gonna hate, potatoes gonna potate, and tomatoes gonna tomate. 
Do you think we are living in the golden era of perfumery? No, I do not at all. I think the golden era of perfumery has passed. Okay, my camera went off, I think it happened. I'm pretty sure I'm still on track. Uh, I was talking about woody fragrances for Mavis House Cat Llama. So, um, I just had a quick look online because my mind went completely blank and I looked at a couple of the woody things that I've smelled and if you want to go kind of niche like Comme de Garçon, which are kind of luxury niche I would try something, try something different. There's a couple of fragrances by imaginary authors. One is called Memoirs of a Trespasser which seems to be a real popular one for them and it's got a lot of vanilla in it but it also has a real oaky kind of dusty woody smell they also have one called uh, yesterday haze which is centered around fig and cream but it has this walnutty woody orchard type of feel and i reviewed it recently as well so maybe go and check those reviews out i've reviewed both of them but I mean, woody fragrances is one of the biggest categories because woods are in everything. If you want sandalwood, I mean, you could try something only because I love it. It's called Namban by Artiste. I feel like I'm repeating myself like a broken record. <laughs> but that is a really good example of a really gorgeous sandalwood. Also, Sandalwood by G.O.F. Trumper, which is kind of obscure. They're a London brand, but it's a very unique sandalwood fragrance. So maybe try them out. Anyway, I hope that helps. So the next fragrance, uh, next fragrance? <laughs> the next question is from Beauty Meow. Ah, oh, Beauty Meow, I watch your videos. I know who you are, girl. <laughs> Salutations. I'd love to know which are your favourite indie fragrances. Okay, indie as in independent perfumer or indie as in kind of indie oils like Black Phoenix and Alchemia and stuff like that. I'm going to go with Black Phoenix because they are one of the most true indie perfumers houses that I have experienced and also actually Sebastien. Sebastien has a really cool fragrance called Black Magic which kind of smells like Black Phoenix fragrances as well. That's a really cool one but in terms of Black Phoenix I absolutely cannot live without their fragrance called Scheherazade. It's a red musk. Um, spicy, incense-y, it's, it's in fact my favourite incense lead fragrance in the entire world, I absolutely love it. It's so exotic and rich and gorgeous and they've got a few, I mean snake oil is amazing as well and they have a fragrance called Kajuraho which is a really weird name but it's so massively complex and it kind of reminds me of Lush a little bit in a weird way, I don't know why. Um, but yeah, they're, they're just a couple of the ones that I love. I could go on for ages about that one, but I'm going to move on. Anyway, guys, Beauty Meow is another fragrance review on YouTube. Go and check her channel out. Meow. I just said meow and the bird went crazy. Anyway, so the next question is from Giselle Vince Chino. Did I say that right? Oh my God, I'm so bad. Hello from sunny Hollywood, California. Jealous much, it's freezing here right now, raining, all of that greyness. I wanted to ask you if there is one perfume that many people have worn and loved, but you would never wear because you just disliked it, dislike too much. My most perfume, my most disliked perfume is Calvin Klein's Obsession. It's me too, I don't like it. I don't like it at all. A very good, close friend of mine who was my flatmate for four years, Tiffany, I love you, used to wear Obsession exclusively. And I don't like that one at all. But the main one that always springs to mind for me is Chanel Number no. 5. It's legendary. It's classic. It's got the Marilyn Monroe ties, which I think is part of the reason it's really famous. But a lot of people love Chanel Number no. 5, and I just really don't. I don't like it at all. No. That one. The next question comes from Jim Cor uh, Jim Causley. Oh, I've spoken to you before as well. I've recently noticed that Midnight Poison were Manatee and Cheap and Chic by Moschino, I'm guessing, Moschino, sorry, all have a note in common to my nose. Do you agree? And if yes, what do you think they might be? Those three fragrances to me are completely different. I guess the only similarities would be between the Moschino and the Dior. 
Wimanity is a salty, fruity, fig, aquatic kind of fragrance. Moschino and the Dior are both, maybe they both have patchouli and rose in it. They have a more, more of a similarity than the other one, and I don't know, it might be patchouli and or rose. But I don't personally view them as the same fragrance at all. I actually wore lashings of Moschino the other day because I haven't worn it for ages and I was at home and I just sprayed <laughs> so much of it. But I don't know. It's probably patchouli, maybe, but womanity aside because that's a very unusual fragrance. Also, how do you deal with people who don't understand why a man would wear women's perfume? In short, I don't deal with them. I don't really care because everyone does what they their own thing. There are always going to be people that don't understand why men wear women's fragrances and vice versa. But there are always going to be people that don't understand why people do anything. People are always going to question you. I don't really deal with them and I've never had, had to defend myself or explain why I wear women's fragrances because I position myself within the right communities and amongst the right people. For instance, Fragrantica is very understanding. And um, this channel. So yeah, I don't really deal with them. If I had to, I'd just politely explain. It's my life, I do what I want. Goodbye. <laughs> Silk oil, oh my gosh, you are old school. You have been around with me since I first started my channel, so Kisses to you, my friend. You said, on your top 10 celebrity fragrances for women video, I told you I was going to get Adam Levine and tell you how I liked it. I love it. Thank you. Yay, score. Excellent. And so inexpensive. It's really amazing. One of my best blind buys. Uh, hmm. When are you coming out with your own fragrance? <laughs> as someone who counts Samsara as one of his faves, I live for it too. I know your creation will be epic. That's a really cool question, and there was a time when I was studying 2016 that I did plan to finish this course and then do the extra module on cosmetic legislation so I could maybe start making my own fragrances, but in my brain it fizzled out. This channel took over, I left my job, I started a new job within the fragrance industry, and to be brutally honest, when I started looking into what it takes to release your own fragrance and the fact that I had only studied natural perfumery as opposed to synthetic, which is where the real money is because it, you can churn them out and they're cheaper to make, there's a lot of red tape. It's very, it, it, to me it just became so overly complicated. My passion is still there for it, but I guess you could say I just gave up. I was a quitter. But I just think my priorities changed, so I probably will not be releasing my own fragrance, although I have made a few. So, in answer to your question, that's that. Anyway, thanks for sticking around for so many years. Are you not bored of me yet? <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, the next question, zzz, questions come from Gopika Madav. Did I say that right? Um, yay, finally one of these. I've been pining to interact with you. I hope you are well. Well, welcome. I hope you are well too. <laughs> question. What do you think of Calvin Klein obsession for women? I just said in my last question, which is very strange that it leads on. Oh, a couple of questions ago. I don't like it. It's not... It's unusual for me to not like that one because it fits into the category of fragrances that I do like. It's spicy. It's a bit resinous. It's deep. It's a little bit dark. I've just come to kind of detest it quite a lot. I think I've been around it too much where I've just gone through the keyhole to the other side of where I just, I can't deal with it anymore. So if that's your signature and I've offended you, I'm sorry, but it's just not something that I like at all anymore. The men's one is actually much better to my nose and that's really weird because I don't usually wear men's fragrances. Two, what tuberose, what is a tuberose fragrance that's more cool chilly like carnal flower and less like fracas that's difficult because tuberose to me isn't a cool fragrance i mean i guess because carnal flower has eucalyptus in it it does have that green mentholy sort of type edge but tuberose is not really a cool flower at all it's heady and kind of enveloping and i think kind of warm the best thing I can say is 
go for more modern tuberose fragrances as opposed to classic because classic tuberose fragrances have an entirely different feel. Tuberose is quite bendable and the more classic fragrances were that very vintage, heavy style like Fracar. Um, and the newer ones, for instance Michael Kors, tend to be that little bit cleaner. Uh, they tend to be a little bit more clear, Diptyque, uh, Dusson, they have a fragrance which is a kind of pure, fresh, unadulterated tuberose. I would just say go for fragrances that are more modern, but in terms of cool, I don't know really. I wouldn't say that tuberose is a cool flower. So, okay, because um, I love the wet jungle eucalyptus... Oh, this is part of the same question. Because I love the wet jungle eucalyptus opening feel of carnal flower and was wondering what would be a more economic alternative. I put on two sprays of fracas and couldn't hear myself think. <laughs> okay. Well, I will give you a suggestion of something that I've discovered really recently. Um, it's not economic by any means because it's a quite pricey niche fragrance, but it's one of the most interesting fragrances I've ever smelled and definitely recently. And it's called Nuit de Bacalite by Nomi Goodsir, who is an Australian person. I mentioned her before, I think. She has an incredibly unusual fragrance that is based on tuberose, but fits exactly what you just said. Um, you said you wanted something wet jungle. This fragrance feels like a tuberose is growing in a humidity, craziness greenhouse. It's a luscious, green, wet foliage, almost vegetal smell with tuberose, a really waxy, modern tuberose in there as well. It's very overly complex, but definitely do not blind by it because A, it's quite pricey and B, it's very unconventional, but it is amazing. So I hope that answers your question. Caleb asks, most mind-blowing fragrances you have tried, not necessarily wearable, but awesome and unforgettable. Definitely the one I just mentioned, Nuit de Bacalite by Naomi Goodsir. Oh my gosh, I've never smelled something so unique and crazy in my life. Tuberose, but a completely unconventional tuberose. Like I said, greenhouse effect. Foliage, wet, hot, humid greenhouse with a tuberose growing right in the middle. That's definitely one of them. What about more recently? What have I smelled? Mind-blowing. It's quite a strong statement because mind-blowing... Mind-blowing fragrances only come along every so often. You know, you do have to... Harking back to... Um, somebody that asked... I can't remember, I'm so sorry. I've got a lot of questions here. Who asked about, is the um, is industry saturated? This is the exact reason why it's really hard to find mind-blowing fragrances because there are so many being churned out now. But mind-blowing... I recently smelled um, Le Labo's Ylang 49, which to me was mind-blowing, only because it didn't smell like Ylang Ylang, but it smelled like such an abundance of beautiful flowers that I've never smelled in quite that combination before. Um, but yeah, that's it. That's all I can think of right now. So I hope that kind of answers your question. But Nuit de Bacalite, definitely by Naomi Goodsir. Okay, this question comes from Kirsty Moroni. You said, I love the original John Galliano Eau de Parfum by John Galliano, but it is discontinued. Have you tried it and do you know of any similar fragrances? On me, it is a jammy incense rose. I do, I have not tried it. I'm really sorry. I've not tried, I've only tried one fragrance by John Galliano, uh, and I'm not sure it's that one. In terms of jammy incense rose, I would probably go for lipstick rose by Frederick Mao. Not so much with the incense, but definitely very jammy rose, and it's a kind of a little bit vintage with a touch of darkness. So I would maybe try that one. What do you suggest for dark, sweet, mysterious, gothic fragrances? Picture Maleficent, Morticia, Seductive, Temperous, Witches, and Vamps. Wow, okay, these are the types of fragrances that I love. So, one second. <laughs> oh, I bashed my elbow. I have two for you straight away, two of which I own, two of which are both very, very similar. One that I recently discovered is called Esparta, and it's Parfumerie Generale's fragrance, and it's number 26. It is a very dark rose, it is a little bit oudy, but not too much because I hate oud. 
but it's in there, but in just the right amount. It's also very patchouli based. It's to me like a nighttime dark gothic going out rose, maybe to a really cool underground club. It's amazing. In the exact same vein, Portrait of a Lady by Frederick Mal. I mention this fragrance all the time. It smells very similar to Esparta. Um, it's another really dark, crumbly, dry, patchouli rose fragrance that's amazing. And the other one that comes to mind is Lust by Lush, much more affordable. This is, to me, a gothic, vampire-like jasmine. It's so unforgiving and scary and loud, and it just feels like fangs and big, thigh-high black leather boots. And I absolutely love it. So I hope that answers your question. Oh, no, you have another one. <laughs> okay, so you said also, there is something in Mugler's Alien that reminds me of Jupe Om. What would it be, do you think? They're both kind of a little bit balsamic and sweet, but I don't think they're similar at all. Jupe makes me feel violently ill. You're not the only one. I really want to like Alien, but there is something in it that just isn't that is very dupe-like, that just throws me, which would be the Alien version that is least similar. Okay, well I would definitely go for something from the Alien line that is maybe released for summer. So the first one that springs to mind would be Alien O Extraordinaire, which I reviewed recently and got recently as well. It smells like Alien, but it is much fresher because it has a kind of Earl Grey tea and a lot more bergamot citrus type feeling to it. Hardly any sweetness at all, but still has that alien character. So maybe try that one out. You know, hope that answers your question. Guys, I really need to go to the toilet. I'm going to be back in five minutes. Just don't go anywhere. I'll be back in a minute. Okay, bye. Hi guys, I'm back. I had to have a little break right there. So anyone that's actually still watching, congrats. You've made it through. <laughs> I'm surprised you're still here. But uh, let's go through the next question. Okay, so this comes from Tamara Peters. And it says, what is your most hated Sheepra and why? Alliage by Estee Lauder. Um, I think that it comes from the fact that I hate oak moss. And at the time I was looking for, and still have not found, this elusive green fragrance that I posted on Fragrantica and a lot of people gave me suggestions of what it might be and um, Aliage sounded like it might be the one that I've been looking for for, I don't know, nine years now and the shock of it was so bad, it was, it's just so overly dry, I don't like that type of fragrance at all, I understand that it's very highly regarded. Also, Nikki de Saint Fowl has a Sheepra that is just to me, I just don't like that style of fragrance. It's very, very difficult for my nose to take in. So that's that one. <laughs> okay, the next question is from Shine on top. On top of what? Top of your bald head? <laughs> that sounded so rude. I meant my bald head. <laughs> okay, um, Shine on top. You say, what is a fragrance that you loved but fragrance community hated? That's easy, MM Ink. I mentioned this one a lot as well. It is probably the most challenging fragrance in my entire collection. The reviews of it on Fragrantica are amazing. People describe it as being like a hamster cage, sweaty, dirty person. It's a combination of ink and uh, clover infused honey and um, incense. It's very animalic, it's very strange. But there is a saving grace in that fragrance. It's a doxel, I think, which is supposed to smell a little bit like laundry. And on my skin, when you first put it on, yeah, it's funky as hell. It's really weird. But when it dries, it's intoxicating and it sings on me. So it's one of the most challenging fragrances I think I've ever smelled. But I still spent £130 on it to get it because I absolutely loved it after smelling it on somebody, uh, a friend, in a bar once. So that one. You also said, what is a fragrance that you hated that the com fragrance community loved? Chanel number no. 5. <laughs> I don't think everybody loves it, but I think it's just the status of that fragrance as in general. It's, it's massive, isn't it? I mean, it's the most famous fragrance in the entire world. Because of Marilyn Monroe, I'm repeating myself, but 
I just don't like it. I think it just smells fusty and old. And I love vintage fragrances. I love things that smell like they're from another time. But that one just has something that doesn't quite fit right with my nose. So that one. Okay, you said if you lost all of your perfumes. Oh, um, why would you say that? Oh. Oh my gosh, if you lost all of your perfumes, they would never get lost because there's so many that they would they, they can't go missing. Okay, let's picture it like a house fire. Oh no, that's going even worse. No, okay, stop. Reset. If you lost all of your fragrances, perfumes, what would be the first fragrance to repurchase? Samsara. Do you think a fragrance brand would ever collaborate with a YouTuber like they do in beauty? Hmm. That's kind of a bit controversial as well. I know for a fact that fragrance websites in general, as in fragrances, uh, websites that sell fragrances in ranges, for instance, Natino, who I'm partnered with, and I've been offered partnerships from other websites that actually sell fragrances online. Definitely, yes. In terms of individual ones, I have seen it before with a particular YouTuber that's, that has the most subscribers on the internet in terms of fragrance. Um, he is very much in conjunction with a lot of brands, or so it seems. But I, I'm not, I don't want to really get into that because I try to stay out of YouTube fragrance community drama as much as I can. I stay in the Ouch Romano bubble. But um, yeah, I think some people are endorsed by brands. Why not? I mean, if the opportunity comes your way, why not? Who knows? Okay, the next question comes from Helen Ho. I know you. I know you. I like the video in which you mentioned your favourite books. So my question is, what kind of music do you like? Um, I have always been an R&B boy. Since I turned 15 or 16, I've been obsessed with 90s and up to 2000. R&B music, whether it be commercial or a little bit more obscure. I like music with a bit of soul in it, a bit of heart. I've never been a rocker. I've never been a classical music lover, although I have been in an opera once, I'll have you know. Um, but yeah, I, I tend to like my big, black, soulful women singers, or even white singers that have a soulful edge to their voice. Um, I also really like acoustic guitar music, especially if it's paired together with a soulful voice. So I really like a singer called Leanna Havers, who's from London, where I'm from. I'm obsessed with her. I've met her twice. I really like a singer called Emily King. She was one of my greatest discoveries of two years ago, and I've just been following and obsessed with her for ages. Uh, there's a really, really gorgeous singer called Jenna Bell, who is almost folky, but with a little bit of soul. So stuff like that. I just like pretty stuff, pretty music that makes my ears sing and my heart sing as well. <laughs> that sounds so cheesy. Um, do you have any suggestions on how to use up perfumes quickly? Spray them. I'm only joking. I don't know. I don't think... You shouldn't, oh, this is a tough one because I have this thing where if you want to use up a perfume quickly, it might mean that you don't necessarily like it as much anymore. I have, I took eight bottles off of my shelf the other day and put them into a box of things where I'm going to use these up quickly. In my head, I'm thinking, oh dear, the light's gone off again. This is not working. Oh my gosh, we're going to get to a point where my main camera light is probably going to go off, so the lighting might change. Anyway, I'll continue, because uh, both of them have died, and I've had to recharge them. So, um, yeah, what I was saying was, it, in a weird sort of way, if you feel like you want to use it up quickly, it might mean that you don't necessarily like it anymore, or you're not so as enamoured by it as when you first bought it. If, if it's coming from a place where you feel like it's going to turn bad, or go off, you just gotta spray it, girl. You just gotta sp keep spraying it. <laughs> I mean, I'm kind of selfish in that way where I just really like to smell like perfume, whether it be a strong one or a weak one, doesn't matter. You just gotta keep be not scared to spray it. And um, that's all I can say. And then you asked also, um, have you 
tried not buying perfume for a period of time to trim down your collection yes i've done that so many times and i've managed to do it by about 50 percent there was a time when i was getting about 25 to 30 bottles a year and now i get about 12 to 15 which is still a lot in some people's eyes i know but there comes a point where you really the the wish list grows smaller so i, I don't feel the need to buy a lot of things anymore so yeah, I have tried it. I think anyone that collects fragrance can get overwhelmed with their collection, regardless of how many you've got. It's your own personal level of, oh my gosh, I have too many. <laughs> too many still never enough though, is it? That's the definition of being a perfumista. The next question comes from James Brown, 52. Ooh, oh no, that's Tina Turner. Is Galen Lom Ideal Eau de Parfum full bottle worthy from New York, USA? Um, I don't know, James. It depends on how much you like it. It depends on, do you think it is? I personally don't wear men's fragrances that often, so I'm probably not qualified to answer. I have smelled the fragrance. It's very Tonka sweet, I think, from what I remember. It was in an airport about two years ago, maybe three. It's a very sweet fragrance. That ultimately, my friend, is up to you. It, I can't answer that for you. But thanks for sending a question, and uh, thanks for being a subscriber if you so are. The next question is from Alcoholic Nun. <laughs> Every time I see a question pop up from you or a comment on my videos, I just crack up because your avatar is so funny and it's just so ridiculous. An Alcoholic Nun. Maybe some exist, I don't know. You said, what are your favorite gourmand fragrances and what are your thoughts on Chanel fragrances? Which do you like and which do you dislike? My favorite gourmands, I personally have moved away from gourmand. There was a time when I really, really liked gourmand fragrances until I discovered resins and spices and dark, heavy, gothic, kind of mysterious fragrances. But at the time, I had a few which I'm actually now going to sell as well from Black Phoenix. There's one called Beaver Moon which literally smells like very realistic strawberry cheesecake with the biscuit and everything going on. I also have another one called Candy Phoenix which smells like Rockstar Soap from Lush which is a kind of candy, vanillic, really fun fragrance. In terms of designer, um, Oh gosh, it's a tough one because I, I stopped wearing gourmands probably about two years ago now. I used to wear them a lot. I really like Britney Spears ones. Midnight Fantasy is a lovely berry vanillic one and also her original fantasy which was a cupcake kiwi one. Yeah, I don't really wear gourmands that much but those are some of the ones that I used to like a lot. So, you also said, oh Chanel. Um, my, one of my holy grail fragrances in my collection is Coromandel, which is from the Chanel Exclusives line. I think it's the best Chanel fragrance ever, despite the fact that it's gone through so many formulations. I mean, two now, I think. They can reformulate it 20 times. I'm still going to love that fragrance. I don't care. It's a white chocolate. It's almost gourmandy. Uh, patchouli incense fragrance, and I absolutely love it. I also really like Chanel Allure Sensuel. I've never owned a bottle, but I really do hope one day that I can get it. And there's one other that I really like as well. Uh, Allure, I really like the original Allure as well as the Allure Sensuel. I really like, it feels so quintessentially Chanel to me and I love that one. So I wouldn't mind owning Mademoiselle as well. The new Gabrielle though, wah, wah. go and watch my review. <laughs> Okay guys, so we're getting towards the end. You'll be happy to know if you're still awake. Hello, wake up. So uh, this question comes from D. Uh, you said, oh yay, finally I can contribute to one of these. Uh, that is if you think my question is worthy. All questions are worthy, D. Uh, since you ha have a sensitive nose, I wonder if you first smell everything you interact with as in all the food you buy and cook or whatever you buy in shops, cigars and cigarettes on other people, etc. Absolutely, 100%. You will be, if you want to find me in a supermarket, you'll find me in the washing powder aisle. That's where I be at. That's where I'm at. That's why I'm smelling all of the new fabric softeners. I'm usually in the air freshener section, uh, smelling the plugins and the candles that they sell there. I smell everything and I always have and that is what has led me 
to this. This is what's led me to loving fragrance so much. I've always been obsessed with my sense of smell. I smell flowers on the street. I will smell trees. I'll pick grass. I'll smell it. It's just a natural progression. And I think I got it from my uncle because he would always smell everything around me. So I was smelling things as well. And yeah, if there's anything that smells, I'm running towards it. Whether it be incense sticks in a market or a new cream. I pop lids off of stuff in supermarkets and smell them. I'm just crazy in that way. So that's a really cool question and it makes me realise that I'm not crazy. I hope you do that as well. Uh, if yes, then it follows me to ask, what kind of bath products do you use? So I usually have showers but when I do have a bath I use Lush products and that's because I used to work there so I'm kind of tied to them by my heart a little bit I'm kind of loyal to Lush I, I use a lot of their bath bombs I use a lot of their bubbles all kinds of stuff from Lush I use really I won't use Radox or anything like that because I know it's bubble bath but there are better products out there and I know Lush can be harsh but I use them um, what's your favourite food? Curry! <laughs> I absolutely love Indian food, it's my favourite food in the world. Again, it comes kind of from the same thing because it's fragrant, it's spicy, it's rich, it's complex, it's... I guess I'm always trying to look for that next level thing, but curry to me is my favourite food. I love Indian food, I love India, I've been three times. Uh, second to that, Mexican. It's a spicy thing. You also said, were you smell sensitive from day one? Did your parents encourage you? Um, I will really enjoy your video, even if you don't put these questions. You're a dear. You're a dear, and I, of course I'll answer them. So, um, smell sensitive, no. I don't think I was smell sensitive. It was more curiosity, I think. Mm. I was just a very curious child, and something that I learned when I did my perfume course really struck a chord with me, and it made me realize why I am the way I am with fragrance and it said we are so obsessed as humans with treating our eyes to the most visually stunning things treating our ears to the most beautiful sounding music teaching our t treating our mouth to such gorgeous tasting luxurious food and our touch with feeling the most gorgeous soft fabrics our noses are the things that we forget about we forget to treat our nose we can always we're always aware that we're smelling things but it, you have to step outside and actually take the time to find things. And being curious as I was, I was always smelling everything all the time. So I wouldn't say I was um, sensitive. I think I just maybe started to train my nose in a weird, indirect way from when I was small. So that's how that happened. And I was never really encouraged. Um, but my mum allowed me to have candles at a young age, which most parents, I think, wouldn't nowadays because, you know, you can burn the house down. But I was always, I always had oil burners and incense and things like that in my room, even from being quite young. So that is kind of an encouragement, I guess. But anyway, thanks for your questions. Okay, there's only a few left. Um, this comes from Marty Vince... Marty Vince Day. Hopefully I pronounced that right. Probably not. Uh, do you have a favourite perfumer knows whose career you follow? And do you collect or avoid any fragrances based on who designed them? Yes, I do. I really love uh, fragrances by Dominique Ropion. He's two of my favourite fragrances in the world. Carnal Flower and Portrait of a Lady are both made by him. I love his bold style. I also really like Sophia Grosman. Um, she's created some of the most amazing fragrances in the world. Just look at her resume and you'll see... But uh, Dominique Ropion, his favourites are my favourite and I do kind of follow him and I am excited when he releases something new. But I never would avoid um, a fragrance based on who it's made by because it's such a wide world. It's such a wide fragrance world and perfumers are versatile. Although some of them have a style, but I'd never count anyone out, ever. So thanks for your question. So this next question comes from Miso Sarah. Uh, I just started a new job and share a small office with a boss who doesn't like loud fragrances. I have to wear a fragrance and feel sad and naked without it. What would you recommend? That's really sad. I was lucky enough to work in an office where people did like it, but I can totally empathise with you because a lot of people have that problem. You would just need to wear maybe a body mist, like I said back in this video. Or go for Noah by Cacherelle. It's quiet. Go for something 
maybe look on Fagrantica because there are certain fragrances that get voted as being uh, not so massive in the projection. Just go through a few that you think you might like and Fragrantica voting is, you know, kind of thereabout. So, but Noah is always the one that I would recommend because it's really quiet and elegant. So try it out, Noah by Cacharel. Oh, okay, another question by Marty Vince, Vince, that's why you said also in the last one. Which fragrance house is your favorite and why? It changes all the time. It used to be Dior. I used to love Dior. Um, before the whole tragedy of reformulations came about, Dior, my favorite, I felt like they had a real huge range of fragrances from classic things like Dioris Diorissimo, Diorella, Diorescence, right up to kind of more modern things like Midnight Poison, the Poison range in general actually, uh, and Addict is really fun. So I liked them for their versatility. They have unfortunately had to reformulate all of their fragrances because of the law. Um, so maybe they're not my favourite anymore. I really like now Zoologist. They're a niche company from Canada. I love what they're doing. I feel like they're making waves in the fragrance industry and I'm always excited to see what they're going to do next. I also really like imaginary authors as well. So, but it's always new discoveries all the time. So much going on. Okay, Melissa Lara, another question from you. You said, I would love to see your wish list for 2018. I do have a few, which I'll mention. I mentioned five of them. So Nanban is the top by Arquiste. I also would really like to get Juicebox by, no, it's called Use Abuse by Juicebox. Most recently I smelled Ylang 49 by Le Labo and I really, really love it. I'm kind of obsessed with it right now. I'm actually wearing it today because I had a sample. I really want to get that one. And two others. I wouldn't mind getting um, Gigi by Jardins Derivant. It's a white floral, it's a tuberose lead fragrance. And also Floricanto by Arquiste, another white floral. Has five flowers in it, as well as Copal, which is a Mexican incense. I really, really like that one too. So they're on my horizon, but Namban is number one. This question comes from Emily. Hi Emily, I know you. You have been in one of my videos before. Oh, the light's gone off. We're gonna have to deal with it as it is because there's no battery left in my light. So um, you were in my subscriber response video, the first one I ever did. It was really cool. You said, uh, do you have goals for your channel for 2018? Do you have an ultimate goal for your channel? Is there anything you'd like to do for with your channel that you, you feel you can't? Um, in terms of a goal, I don't really look forward that much in terms of what am I going to do. I don't feel like I'm a cutting edge person where I'm always trying to do the latest things. In terms of the tools I have at my disposal with YouTube and things like that, I'm always a little bit behind. I've been like that in my whole life, especially with technology. The main thing I'd really, really like to start doing would be live videos and that's what this was supposed to be but it isn't unfortunately i still need to work it out it's kind of nerve-wracking being live and if i do it i want it to be perfect and i want it to look okay and not be that weird fail where you know nobody joins the live feed and it's just really grainy and bad so i need to do some test runs but i really would like to do some live videos um as a way to kind of interact with you guys a lot more but it could go wrong that's me just being a pessimist as usual but yeah that's what i'd like to do but anyway thanks for your question and thanks for sticking around for so long as well you've been around for a long time okay this question comes from christina kessel let's see the bird i want to see the bird <laughs> that's so funny um i can't take all of this now to film him he's just over there being very good today as well um, but he is actually in a video of mine. He in fact opened a video of mine and I will post a link to it or tell you what the name of it is here in the video because I'm going to have to figure that out once I edit it. Okay. This next question comes from Swag Aiden um, with a picture of looks like the Muppets. Do you know what Pororo is? Be specific. I have no idea what that is. This question comes from Stanley Post. Hi there, I do have a question. I know you enjoy unusual scents, so wondering what you think of Christoph, Christoph, Christopher 
Bros in uh, of I Hate Perfumes and his philosophy about perfumes. I hope you're doing well. I'm so glad you're getting tons more subs. Thanks very much. That's very kind of you. Uh, off topic, do you remember the vid where you... The vid you did where you were blindfolded and guessing your own perfumes? I was very impressed. I think I'd fail that test. Here is Christopher's website statement, which I'm sure you have seen. So this is most of you don't know him. And then there's a whole lot of text that, with the greatest of respect, Stanley, I'm not going to read right now because, respectfully, it's going to take up a lot of time for me to read it and I have a few more questions to get to, but I will read it and I will message you privately. That's a lot of statement for me to kind of try and analyse right now. Sorry. Okay, a few questions left. Scott Piper. Hello, Thomas. How are you doing? I uh, hope you're doing well. My question for you is, what are your top three absolute must-have fragrances that you're looking to buy now that it's 2018? See the question I just did recently. Thanks also, because I know that we message each other quite a lot. This comes from C. Tremblay. Hi, Tom. I love your videos. Thank you very much. I have a bunch of questions for you. Firstly, do you still have your parrot? Well, that's weird that someone else just asked about that as well. I do, and he's not a parrot, he's a cockatiel, actually. <laughs> um, yes, I do still have him. Um, not sure we've heard him in a while. That's because when I review things, I place him in his second favourite spot in the kitchen, which t tends to make him a bit quiet. And I do want to quickly say something about him, actually, because a while ago, somebody commented and said how they thought it was really cruel that I have a bird in a cage and how it's called you to animals and stuff like that. It was a few years ago. I just want to clear up the fact that he actually belonged to a very lovely elderly neighbour of mine called Janet, who sadly passed away a few years ago. And when she went into hospital, she kindly asked that I would take care of him because she knew she wasn't going to come out of hospital ever again. So that's why we have a bird in our house, of course. It is a little bit cruel to keep birds in a cage, but whatever. I wanted just to make a point of saying that because it was just a bit weird and, you know, it's actually a positive story. He's being taken care of rather than just being flown away. As a tropical bird in London, he would get munched up very quickly. <laughs> what is my favourite amber incense patchouli smoky vanilla? Um, oh my gosh, I have tons. Um, Shalimar? is a lovely amber vanilla, kind of a little bit leathery as well. Um, I really like, as mentioned before, Memoirs of a Trespasser by Imaginary Authors. It's a hugely Madagascan vanilla, but it's kind of woody, a little bit smoky, a bit dry as well. Um, patchouli, as mentioned again, Esparta by Parfumery General and also Frederick Mao patchouli rose kind of incense fragrance so uh, you said your favorite montel we know you're not super fond of them no i am not i'm not because i just can't get along with them i don't know why i don't know what's going on with that i've tried at least 30 of their fragrances now and still i cannot get along with them it's actually turned to night that's how long i've been talking so continuing with c tremblay's question about montel my favourite Montels that I've tried, um, there's only been a rare few. The main ones I can remember are Sweet Oriental Dream. I really liked that one because it reminded me of Shalimar in a weird way. It was that similar kind of ambery, powdery sort of fragrance and it was really strong, wow. And I really like strong fragrances, but that one stood out as well as Wild Pears. I felt like that was a nice departure from the sea of oud fragrances that they make. They make a ton of oud fragrances, that's kind of their thing. But Wild Pears was lovely. And although I'd never wear it or buy it, Chocolate Greedy was quite interesting because it was a gourmand that had a kind of oaty, cereal-like feeling to it. And it was a bit unusual, but kind of cool as well. And uh, that's pretty much it. There's been very few and far between fragrances by Montel that I've liked. Their incense-y things just failed on me and incense is one of my favourite things, so. Um, you also said Guerlain Mugler Amouage. <laughs> okay, favourite Guerlain Samsara. Favourite Mugler Angel Liqueur is amazing. 
And Amouage Opus 9 is still my favourite Amouage yet. I'm still to discover one that has topped that one yet. Also, in your initial review of Tower's Laird du Desert Marocaine, you weren't so enthralled. How has it grown on you? Massively is the answer to that one. At first, I liked it. I hadn't really got to grips with it, I don't think. But when I discovered the way it developed on me and especially the reaction from people, you know, a lot of people found it really interesting, which then in turn made me look into it a bit deeper. I absolutely love it and it's, it is one of my most complimented fragrances I own or the most complimented fragrance I own and it's really special and I only really wear it on special occasions now. I absolutely love it and added to the fact that towers are a little bit difficult to get in the UK. You can get them in London but they are hard to find in some places. Um, how many bottles are you at in your collection now? Uh, 90 at the moment. It goes up and down because, like I've said previously in this video, I give them away, I get new ones. At the moment it's 90 or thereabout, uh, and that's at 30 mils and above. I don't count 10 mil decants or samples or anything like that because that would just be horrendous. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's 90. That's what I've got at the moment. So you said, oh, okay, I'll stop now. Okay, all right then. Thanks for your questions. The next question comes from Karen Vanderberg. Karen, hello. Oh my gosh, you are literally one of the most active members on my channel and my group as well. So I just wanna say thank you and take the time to tell you how much I appreciate your input. You always keep conversation flowing on my group. You're always interesting, something to say. You're just right there, always with something to say and you're so involved in everyone's conversations and I really like it. I feel like you really are a true subscriber, even though that's not, you know, I know everyone's a subscriber, but I, I just notice you a whole bunch. Anyway, you said, how am I doing? I'm doing great, thank you. How are you? Um, okay, let me think. Do you spray a certain perfume when you know you meet someone who loves or hates the smell of it and you know their feelings about it, but you still use it? No, I don't. In fact, I do the opposite of that. <laughs> so I would never be the person that would, if I know somebody hates a fragrance, I'd never wear it around them because I think that's just kind of unfair. Um, and on the flip side, if somebody loves a fragrance, not only will I wear it around them maybe, but I would usually give them a decant of it as well. If somebody says, oh, I love that, I'll either give them some of my collection or I'll point them in the direction of how to get it for cheap because I am a bargain hunter. Anyway, thank you so much for your question. I guess I'll speak to you really soon on the group. <laughs> okay, bye. This comes from Brendan McDade. McDade, if you had 30 seconds to leave the country, which two Bipal and which two Gorilla fragrances would you grab? Gorilla, by the way, is the fragrance line from Lush. So Bipal, it would be Scheherazade and Snake Oil, without a shadow of a doubt, done. I'd grab them right now if I could. If there was a fire, I'd grab them. And Gorilla from Lush, it would be Karma and it would be Lust. I would grab those two. I also have a 30ml of Ginger, which is really hard to find now. Okay, I'm going to change it. I would grab Karma and Ginger. Lust can stay behind because Lust is a lot more challenging. So, Karma, Ginger, done. This question comes from Arden Powers, looking quite dapper in your bow tie and suit there. What do you think about my fave, Armani Privé Rose d'Araby? I have never smelled it, I'm afraid. I've only smelled one fragrance from the Armani Privé line and that was the Mer Imperial, which was an instant love and I need to somehow get that one, a decant at least of it. But unfortunately, I haven't smelled that one, I'm sorry. This comes from Nadia Mizrio Mizrova? <laughs> I'm so bad, aren't I? I'm so sorry. Do you remember your first fragrance? Do you still have it in your collection? Yes, I do, and no, I don't. I remember the first fragrance I had. It was Eternity for Men by Calvin Klein. And it's so far removed from anything I would ever wear now. It's For me, it's just completely not my style. I actually gave it away quite soon after I got it. Not my style at all, but when I was kind of learning about fragrance and figuring out who I was as a person, I tended to buy things that were popular, like Cool Water and Eternity and just a few things that I just would rather not mention at all. <laughs> but thanks for your question. 
Two questions left. This one comes from Wendy Young. Hello, Wendy, how are you? That's my mum's name as well. It's a very special name to me, and I know who you are too. You said, what is your top three favourite notes in fragrance? Incense, tobacco, and white flowers. Can I just generalise it as white flowers? Tuberose mainly, but I really like white flowers. All three together, now we're talking. <clears throat> And the final question comes from Pamela Fernandez de la Regrera. That is a name and a half. You said, hello Thomas, great idea. Have you ever had a bad response to a fragrance from a bystander? If so, how did you react, respond? That was, goes back to the question before. It was a lady in my office. She told me my fragrance was vile, which was quite offensive. Maybe I'd put on an offensive amount of the fragrance, I'm guessing. I didn't react really at all because I feel like arguing over fragrance is very futile and annoying because everyone has different tastes. So she was an older lady too and I respect my elders. So I didn't really say much. I just said, oh, okay, I'm sorry. And uh, never wore it again because <laughs> I'm polite like that. Hi guys, Sarge Bono, it's me again. Ah, so three questions got lost in the making of this video. Technical errors left, right, and center. So I wanted to just to quickly tag them onto the end. I've had to do it on a separate day. Sometimes technology fails us, but because you've probably been listening to me for a very long time, I'm going to just quickly go into the questions. So the three people that uh, questions got lost somehow, I apologize, but you get to be the grand finale. So um, I've had to take photos of them as well because it's just all been a big old mess. So this question comes from Maxima655 and you said, you describe yourself on Twitter as a perfumery student. What are you studying? Um, this is not a first reaction because obviously I've answered it before, but um, thank you, you reminded me to update my Twitter. I was a perfumery student. I was studying natural perfumery with a company called uh, Perfume Art School UK. I wanted to study perfumery for such a long time, it was something that was a big milestone I wanted to achieve in my life. And I looked at lots of courses and a lot of them unfortunately cost upwards of £10,000 and you have to kind of be able to speak French and or go to France to do them. And the company that I found were relatively new when I found them. So I was almost like a guinea pig, I guess you could call it, but it was a natural perfumery course um, and I really liked it. It was kind of like learning ballet to have the basis of dance. Apparently learning naturals is a really good way to obviously learn raw materials in their natural form and blending them is very difficult, but it was challenging and amazing. So that's what I did and I absolutely loved it. And thank you because now I'm going to update my Twitter to say that I'm not a student anymore. I passed my course, yay for me, um, in February of 2016, so I am so far behind in updating my social media. I'm just crap with technology in general, hence this part of the video. <laughs> you also said, what, what do you think about layering fragrances? If you like to do it, what is your best mix? Any suggestions to mix fragrances? Layering, I don't personally really do ever, and there's a couple of reasons why. The first one is, I really like to appreciate a fragrance for what it is and the creation that went into it and the, the person's thoughts and their intended destination, if you like. And although it's really fun because it's kind of like creating your own little invention and your own kind of style of fragrance or your own little concoction, it's like a, an easy way to blend your own thing and create something new or exciting. I just don't tend to do it. Also because... I get really overwhelmed if I wear more than one thing at once. I'm the sort of person that will shower between fragrances because I get overwhelmed and too many fragrances have the opposite effect where I start to feel dirty and that's just very bizarre, but it's just overwhelming. But it's weird you should ask that because just the other day I was talking to a lady um, who works for this company that sells fragrances that are meant to be layered and we started talking about how you should do it. So there are a couple of ways Apparently, layering a fragrance one on top of the other isn't the way to do it because it can drown, certain things can drown other things out, so it becomes a kind of hodgepodge of things. Apparently, the best way to do it if you want to layer is, say you had two things, 
spray one on one side of your neck and one on the other and then maybe do the same but on opposite wrists so you're getting both fragrances projecting but kind of meshing together in the air if you lay it on top on top on top it can become muddy so just a little tip that I learned from this lady that owns this company so thank you for your question on to the next one so this question comes from uh, Ayaska Summers that's a lovely name if that's your real name what do you think about dupes are you for or against them and is it necessary to pay a lot of money to have one cent when you can get it for less um, hmm, dupes I think are a slightly controversial subject. I personally have bought dupes and the dupes that I have bought have been fragrances that are impossible to find. So I've seeked out or seeked out, sought out dupes of things that have been majorly discontinued, are maybe super vintage and old and you just can't find them anymore. But in terms of in more general feeling, I think that dupes are often cheaper. I mean, not all the time. There are dupes of fragrances out there that are actually quite expensive. But I think it's maybe about budget. I do have a certain level of respect for perfumers and the things that they make. But then sometimes, you know, if you really want to buy a fragrance that you can't get anymore, why not? I've bought a Midnight Poison dupe before. I have bought a Gucci Rush for men dupe before, I've bought Chloe Innocence, purely because I wanted just to get an, at least a feeling of what the fragrance was that I used to love. So it's down to the individual. If your budget does not stretch and dupes, if you can find good ones, it's down to the individual. Go for it. Why not? I'm not for or against them because I have b bought them before, um, but I've learned to accept that sometimes now if a fragrance is gone, it's gone. But budget-wise, why not? Get your life. And the very last question is from Charlie Rose. Charlie, you are the final question. You said, I love your reviews. I only just have subscribed, but I've been taking your advice for years. Wow, that's amazing. Oh my gosh, like, don't take everything I say to heart, really. No, really, thank you, that's amazing. <laughs> what do you do with perfumes you buy but don't like, especially if they are part of a collection? For instance, a celebrity fragrance line. Do you recycle that them to someone else or do you keep them so your collection is intact? Also, I work with kids and most kids hate perfumes, so what are some soft, soapy, clean scents? Okay, so um, in terms of things that I don't like, I would never buy a fragrance I don't like. That only ever really happens if it's a blind buy and it goes completely wrong. But what I said, and I think I said it previously in this video somewhere a few days ago, I always give them away. Um, if you're a friend of mine, it's likely you're going to be getting a lot of perfume in your life because it is easy to really tire of fragrances. So I think rather than, you know, I'd never throw a fragrance away. That is a cardinal sin. I would give them away. My mum is usually the recipient of the fragrances. I gave her six at Christmas. I give them to my friends. Um, if it's a kind of special one, I do sell them on eBay sometimes. I don't really tend to swap because swaps, you have to really find the right deal at the right time and it can take a lot of trawling through, but usually I just give them away. I would never keep a fragrance in my collection to keep a, a, a line intact. My, fra my fraction? My collection is forever changing and evolving, so that's that one. And with working with kids, that's a tough one really. I'm not sure that all kids hate fragrance. Maybe they do. I'm not sure, not the ones that I've encountered, but you would, I would just go for something, like I said to another person that asked a question, the instant fragrance that springs to mind is Noah by Cacharel. Um, it's a light, airy, soft, very inoffensive fragrance that has a kind of coffee-ish edge, but it's more about a very um, almost aqueous, fresh, musky sort of thing. So. Go for anything that, like I said before, maybe look on Fragrantica because they people vote on sillage and projection. So go for something that's got a bit of a lower thing. In terms of examples, I mean, there are tons, but try Noah out. Anyway, guys, on to the final bit that I did a couple of days ago. Switch. <sighs> anyway, 
I hope you guys liked this video as long as it was. I'm out on my own. Click my logo down there to subscribe. And I'll see you guys soon for another video. Goodbye. Love all of you. Goodbye.